This will be the third time I've installed an offense. And offense, defense, we are, we are much further ahead than where I thought we would be at this time in July. Much further ahead. And that's a good thing because they're good kids and they're, and they're studying their playbooks. They're listening. Uh, we've had some new kids come out that really, we have, we, have, we have a kid that has never played football before today. And I bet, I bet he scored, I bet he caught seven touchdown passes today. And he's just fast. He plays baseball. And, and, he, and he's never played football before, but you know what? He's a center fielder. And the baseball coach came to me and said, I got a kid that, I don't know what the time was, that he runs from, from first base to third base in this time. I said, that sounds fast. Let's try him out. And, and he has been awesome. Um, but we've got some other kids. So we have some of our basketball guys who are at Myrtle Beach for a, uh, for a tournament. And so today was like really build depth day. We had a lot of young guys that, that showed us some good things. And we, we had two quarterbacks rotating with the, uh, with the upper, <clears throat> or with the varsity. Each got 10 different series throughout. We played, we played five games. Uh, and so basically we got two series with each quarterback. From the 40 to the 20, you had four plays to get a first down. And then if you got to the 20, you got four plays to score. Uh, the one quarterback went 9 of 10 scoring, which was pretty good. The other guy went 6 of 10 scoring. So, you know, our, our 20 opportunities, I understand that it's just, uh, you know, it's just 7 on 7, but, you know, we scored 15 out of our 20 tries, and, that, and that's pretty good for us, considering that these kids, and honest to God, it's been like teaching a foreign language right now. Because what they did, and there was nothing wrong with what they did, it was great. It's just different than what we did. And so it's been like, been like, uh, you know, foreign language. So things have been really good on that end. The terminology is the biggest, the biggest barrier gap. And that's kind of what I, I put up there. And I think that that's going to be the most important thing. It's not necessarily, I mean, you guys, you know, I, I think the wing T offense is good for the youth level because you get a lot of guys involved. That's why I think it's good. You don't have to be have the greatest players. You have misdirection. You have sweep. You can, You'll have one guy that you pounded up the middle, you have quick traps, things like that. So I think it gives you an advantage at the younger levels, but the terminology is the reason why I think it matches up to what we do in the spread. Because while we have you know, two guys split, you know, you might have two guys split and two guys tight, you know, we're two by two, just spread. You guys might be two by two but tighter, but the motion and things like that, that's all really important. So before I get started, what kind of questions do you guys have? I'll write them up on the board. That way. I don't forget, you don't forget, we can go down through if you've looked at the playbook. And anything is, is open. Because I know you guys are, you know, you're raring to go next week, right? Yeah. So what kind of questions can I answer right now? Anything, throw it out there. I've got three things that I want to talk about. Terminology, motioning, things like that, and, and then rugby tackling. Uh, outside of that, you know, I kind of want to leave this up to you guys and, and see where we go with it. So what, is there anything right, right off the bat that we can talk about offensively, defensively? When you call a play out of the huddle, yep. I, I guess that's what I want to know, is some of the plays out of the huddle, what is the terminology that you use? So what do you use for uh, to send a guy in motion? Okay, so that, that's a great question. So let's just talk about, and I'm just going to draw up, you know, basically that right there, okay? So. Some people they would you know they would call this zip and that would be zap and everybody had their own different terminology. So I looked at all these different things and, and they lettered these guys and I thought, man, that's that's a lot as a play caller to remember. I thought it was really difficult to remember, like, okay, I want the guy on the left side and I don't I want him to go in this type of motion and we call that jack or whatever whatever one. So I tried to make it really simple. And, and I have actually, believe it or not, this is not a, a toot my horn. I've changed a lot of coaches the way that they call motion, just guys that I've talked to at clinics and things like that, because it's the easiest way in the world. And, and so basically what we do is we teach our kids. In America, we read from left to right, okay? And so what we're going to say is that we're going to split our center, the first guy that is off the line of scrimmage to the left, of the quarterback, he's A. All right, he's our A. So if I wanted to go in A jet, I would say A jet, jet motion. Or if I wanted to go in missile motion, which would be a slower motion to the other side, be A missile. 
If I wanted him to go in rocket motion, which is a sweep that way behind the fullback, a rock or a rock. Okay? If I want this guy to go in motion, he's B. And here's why it made it so simple, because when I'm thinking about the plane, I know I want that guy to go from left to right. It's really simple for me not to think about what player is that. And what is his, what is his motion, especially when you have multiple guys out there. What's his motion? It's just really simple for me to say, hey, first guy there. A and B. And, and it really is makes it. So if I wanted to go sweep right, I would say H S sweep right. And that would be that would be what the call would be. Alright, so we would we would get into what we would say formation, and then we would say A jet sweep right. Or A jet, you know, 34 dive or 34 ice, you know. That's how we call it. We we give the motion and then and we say the play. Uh, is that is that what you were asking? Yes. Okay. You guys, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you guys have motioned in the past, but that has made things so easy as a play call. It's A and B. All right, and it's here. If, I don't know if any of you plan to go to a huddle or signal. We just go here. A, there's my acronym. So A, jet, or A, missile, or A, rocket. And then if it's B, it's B, there's my button. B, jet. And it has made, now, at the high school level, we go some empty, so sometimes we have three guys. All right, and he's C, so we would go C. And the only thing that's different, it's the first guy, so whether this guy's here or whether he's here, he's still C. All right, that, that extra player becomes C because it's always the first player, A and B. And generally speaking, 95% of the time, it's this guy or this guy going in motion, so it's A or B. Usually what I would do with him is he can run what I call like skip motion. We're going to come here and then I'll, I'll move them across the formation on the pass round. Okay? So you don't have to probably have to worry about C. Unless you go in, and there's your C. I come up with a different one. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that answer? Get that on video? Have you ever I did. I'll edit that out. I'll, I'll edit that, that out. That's going to go on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, give us your Rick and Rocket. Rick just getting back to the starting position. The That's exactly what it is. So, yeah. So let's talk about those motionings real quick. All right, a jet motion is a full speed motion behind the quarterback. So the quarterback, you know, our slots will be right here, and they're going to be looking, and our quarterback will give a little leg tap for my left. So if it's a jet, it's going to be down, set up, and then he'll open up, and we'll fake jet, and then do whatever we do. So that's jet. It's a jet is full speed across. If you're going to run jet sweep, you want the ball to be snapped under center at the outside leg of the guard. Okay? You want it to hit quick. These kids are supposed to be as fast as they can go, though. There is no hesitation. Boom. Get across the formation. So that's jet. If it's rip, back to your question, Matt, if it's rip, you're exactly right. All we're doing is it's rip is rip, ripping a piece of paper. So what we'll do is we'll rip that guy back to where he would be if he was in a set position. Rocket motion is just like jet, but now it's full speed, one yard behind the fullback. So you can run sweep, rocket sweep. All right, turn and pitch it out there. And, and when we run rocket sweep, we tell our quarterback, when he leaves your peripheral vision, that's when you snap the football. So if you're ready, down, set up, and as soon as he leaves your peripheral, set up, and then you turn, reverse out, and pitch it, and then the pitch goes to where the tackle was at. It's a wide pitch. Okay. So does that help? Yep. yep. Rip, uh, rip, rocket. And I don't know if you guys will do any missile, but it's real nice if you're going to run some sort of pullback sweep to missile that guy over, it, and now you've set, now you're in a trip set. Now you've got an extra blocker over there. So he's getting reset. He just he doesn't reset. He base basically you can reset it if you wanted to. We don't, we have him just motion across, and then when he gets to the tackle, we're right there. You know, you could fake toss and run counter back with that guy. But no, it's, it's not a reset position. We would shift to that. What else we got? Like anything on motioning? I like motion. I, I really like, I do it at the high school level a lot. Unless we're, if we're playing really fast, if we get into what we call our NASCAR tempo, we won't motion. Um, but I like it just because even at the height, well, at, at the pro level, the reason why people motion is because every defensive player they go like that. 
immediately and they look at the motion. Now their eyes are off the keys, even if it's just for a split second. So I can imagine at the youth level that gets pretty intense. Um, I understand it now this point because you and I talked about it. I'm not sure how many guys in the room have looked at the offensive playbook on the exception of that tw Cub 24 dive. Yeah. That changed to block left 20 dive. Okay, yeah, so Can that was... Can why that is? And yeah, all right. So we're talking about, you know, our primary play at the high school level. We're going to block left. You know, when, when these kids get to the high school level, we read on, and we're going to read at least one, sometimes two, sometimes we'll even read a third level play in our office. So the quarterback is always going to have an opportunity to read an end man on the line of scrimmage. So what, what was a big uh, language barrier for us was that while we're telling our line to block left, our running backs are actually moving from right to left in our offense. And, and that's just different. You know, they were used to saying, hey, we're running 22, and you're running it freaking here no matter what. And you run it there, and we're going to make it work. And there's nothing wrong with that. We just do things differently. So these guys, and the reason I go pistol is because I don't want to give away run strength pre-snap. If I, if I, and we will set our guys in strong and weak. But if I set that guy over there, a defense will set to me. I built, you know, where I can get up to the line and I can give my quarterback an option. You know, if I want to run zone to the one five bubble right here with B gap open, then I'm going to tell him to run that way. Okay? So that's why we go pistol. Um, so anyway, what we were talking about was, was, you know, coming up with a dive play that simulated our dive as much as we could. Okay? Um, we're, you know, all these guys up front are all going to block left. Okay, now when we zone, and you guys aren't going to zone, you're going to more veer block, everybody's going to gap down, which is fine. But what we're looking to do is we're looking to create movement, moving to the left, and then we want our running back to hit it, but then be able to be an athlete, and we call it bend it, bang it, or bounce it. All right? So in our offense, we're, we're asking our kids to be more athletic. We're asking them to be natural football players, use their God-given ability to make cuts and do things like that. All right? So we were trying to figure out, all right, we're going to screw our kids up. We call this 24 dive. You know, these linemen are going to be thinking, all right, well, 24, my, my gap rules tell me I'm blocking here. And that's not what we want. We want to make sure that on this one play takes away all of their rules and it just tells them, listen, we're going to leave the end man on the line of scrimmage on block because the fullback is going to come up and kick him out and everybody's blocking and now our running backs are going to make a read. So Matt and I, we just, we just kind of talked about it. We threw it out. Uh, and I think, what, what, did you, what did you say? We were just going to call it block left. That block left. That right tackle to block down, not block the man. It's going to block, tell everybody to block left. And then 24 dive. Okay, so that way, 20, 22 dive. That's going to give uh, that's going to give our linemen. This is what you're doing, running backs. This is what you're doing. It's the one time that we'll have basically two calls, uh, just just to try to make sure that there is no confusion. But when we do when we do our dive play, we're diving left for our linemen. We're actually hitting it on the right side or on the back side of the play with our running backs. And again, just so you guys know why. Because when they get to the high school level, they are going to zone block here. And this guy's going to look. He's going to look to bang it, maybe defend it, or to bounce it over here. And we're going to read that play. If he crashes down, we pull it, and then we have secondary things. So trying to create this with, you know, and at the youth level is why we did that. Yeah. Uh, you just used terminology a minute ago that's not this playbook yet. What's that? The pistol. None of your formations have an eye formation. Is that what you're calling it? So I can add that and read email. Well, that's got a shotgun. I'm sorry? It's all shotgun. So when I say pistol, I just mean that, you know, our guy is going to be directly behind. So, you know, our quarterback, his heels are going to be at five yards. And that and the pistol tells our running back that he's going to be directly behind. So, do you, do you this is not the eye. What's that? Do you have any eye formations? Because there's none in this playbook. I, no, okay. I, I've never been in the eye. Okay. 
But I mean, we run. I, he, what I did was I took away. I said, you know, give me, give me my best athlete quarterback, and then I eliminated that guy, and I moved him out there, which moved another player out of the box. And there's my second runner, basically. You know, my primary runners here, my secondary runners there. Okay, so that's. I mean, if anybody wanted to go, God, if you guys were ready. You, you can turn all of that stuff into shotgun. All that stuff is fine. If you wanted to, and you have that. And then all you do, all I did, because I had a team last year in Mount Vernon that did that. They did some gun. Didn't work out real well because one out of every five snaps went over their head. But, uh, but, you know, they would just add this. You know, when they would give a formation and they would just shoot gun. And that told them they were in the shotgun. So. But if anybody wants to, have that. If you've got a kid that can snap and then a player that can do this, that'd be great. So if anybody wants to do that, go ahead. In the pistol, yep. if you were to run that, is the back usually what, two yards behind the quarterback then? He is. So our, our, our feet, our quarterback's heels are at five, and our running back toes are at seven. I would, I would tell you guys, move that up. Put his yeah. toes at, put his heels at four, and put his toes at six. Okay? That, that's what I would do. It's an easier snap, closer to the line of scrimmage. Your kids aren't going to hit the hole as fast as ours do. You know, we've, I've got my running backs at seven because they're hitting that freaking hole pretty quick and we have to have a time to read. Uh, just browsing through this, is pretty much the only uh, line of position you have four one guards, is that? Yeah, yeah, just because a, a ta if you can, if you've got tackles with the pole, I would do it. That's great. I just, I know at that level, man, that would be tough. We pull our tackles. We don't pull our guards that much. We're on some power school. We actually put our athletes at tackles. We run a lot of screens, and then we try to get our guys up to the second level. Um, so the, the philosophy is when you're running inside zone, is to put your big dudes, your center, your two guards, so you can be thick in the middle, a little more athletic on the edge. Uh, but yeah, for right now, if you've got tackles that can pull and you can add something into it, that's awesome. We pull our tackles quite a bit. So, do you have one that could do it? Do you think? Maybe. That'd be, sweet. That'd be great if you could. Because no one teaches kids to, to read tackles, they teach them to read cards. What else? Okay. Uh, motioning, pretty simple. We want to talk about anything else offensively, like quarterback footwork, running back footwork, anything that I can help you guys with on that. Um, I, we did touch on it with the guys that haven't been here yep. in the meetings. There's no pass plays in this offensive playbook. You might want to touch on a basic play out of Did this. Did I not put any pass plays in there? Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, so, you know, at that level, you can, you know, everybody has a pop pass, right? Hit the tight end pop pass, fake the dive, throw in a tight end pop pass. Everybody has that. Um, what, what, it, what has always been good for us is some sort of boot waggle concept, a power pass or play action where we're faking off tackle and throwing it to the lead back. Um, again, you know, at the high school level, it's a, it's a lot more advanced, but, uh, you know, so to give you an idea, and again, I don't know, I don't know if, if you guys can do this, we talked about, well, man, they're going to bring this, this sixth guy, and he's going to come off the edge really hard. You know, if we don't have somebody that can, that can pull it, that, that could become an issue. Um, but we've always, we've always jet motion there, sent our fullback to the flat, took that guy vertical, you know, went drag on the back side, all right, and then just reversed our quarterback out. And, and all we did was we just told our kids to reach on the play side, you know, because we didn't pull. All right, so that was something you could do. As I, as I thought about that, you know, the other thing that you could do is you could also go tackle over to create that, that three-man surface on that side, okay? And now you'd only have two guys back there, but, you know, and he would drag, that's okay because your quarterback's going to boot away. I mean, so that's a pretty simple, you know, where you're asking me this three-man surface, it doesn't matter that, you know, that he's on the line of scrimmage, he's covered up, he can't go out anyway. And they all would reach to the left, he would block back. And swing. I mean, that, that's always been a good misdirection pass play for us. This kid's always wide open in the flat. 
and at the youth level, that's what we've seen. So the terminology, what would you call that? I would call that lying. Right. When we when we go over, we move that guy over. So lying would say tackle over, tight end go to the back side, and that would be a jet boot left. A jet boot left. We know that we're getting jet action. And you guys would probably maybe just want to say boot pass left, so that way your line would know not to go downfield. Boot pass left. So that's that's a great play. Another one that. Oh, and then you'd have the quarterback open to the right side. Yeah, so he would he would fake jet. So if it was a jet, he would take the snap down, set up. He would come right here. That fullback would be taken off into the flat right now. Quarterback would give a slight fake, and, and really his back's to the defense. That is the fake. This the, the running back is the one. He's the one that gets the fake, and then the quarterback literally he's going to try to get the seven yards, rip his head around, and you know the, the read is deep. I don't know if he can throw it far that far, deep, short, and then you got to drag him across the middle at eight to ten yards at the youth level. But really, it's always been this guy in the flat. That's been a pretty pretty good play for. Uh, power pass has always been good, you know, just fake it off tackle. So, you know, if you were in a, if you were in a three back set there, what we, what we would do normally if you run a power, you know, he's going to kick out this end man on the line of scrimmage, everybody's going to block down. Well, now this player would release and he'd run a 10 yard corner route, probably be wide open. All right. Rather than taking an inside angle to kick this player out, the end man on the line of scrimmage, he's going to take an outside angle, trying to make it look as much like, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at you like I'm coming to hit you, and then at the last second I'm going to veer off. Five yards to the flat. Quarterback's going to reverse out. He'll now be the man that sets the edge. Small fake there, and then just roll to it. Deep to short. And it's also you can run that out of jet motion, or you can fake, you know you can fake jet sweep. He could roll out and then get depth, and that player would be in the flat. You can run it out of any formations, but it's, it's faking something. So waggle fakes, and then you go backside. How are you is play side. All right, then your pop pass. Um, you know you guys are going to know your kids a lot more than me, so I, I don't want to tell you. You know, here's what you here's what you need to run. If you want to come to me and say, hey, what can we do? I got a kid that does this well. But all I would ask is that your terminology matches up. That's the most important thing to me. Terminology match up, and I think we're good. I don't know how much you guys throw at that level. I mean, everybody's got to have something. But what have you thrown in the past? Maybe that'll help. What have been some things that you've thrown in the past? Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Pop pass. Pop, pop pass, pass, right? Pop pass. And, and, and off of that dive play. Half that pass. Good pass. Half that pass, man. That. That's got to be a great one, right? You yeah. threw that seven Especially seven. at 30 enough. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. <laughs> you said I was going to have to do a half that pass. Yeah, that's great. There was, a, there was a coach there that I'm pretty good friends with today from back where I'm originally from. <laughs> We were having some fun toying around with each other. He's a wing team guy on the lights at 7 and 7. And I ran a half back pass. I let Craig Howard throw. It was hilarious. Everybody saw it because you're not supposed to do that back pass at 7 and 7. Screw it. I did it anyway. Uh, so, pop passes, half back passes. You know, if, if you're able to, to throw a counter pass like a boot or a waggle, boot pass left, boot pass right. I'm telling you, you're going to get these players open in the backfield all the time. They're going to be open in the flat constantly. If you can, if you can get that block, and again, it's from what you know. The last time we met, that seemed like it was going to be an issue. Um, but I think that maybe if you go with three-man surface, bring your tackle over, which is just a great run play anyway. I like to run jet sweep out of a three-man surface, bring that guy over, and now you've really got. Great numbers up there on the edge. What else? Can you give an example of the screenplay you run? What, what formation you run? Best screenplay for you guys is probably going to be what's called smoke. So I would I would I would kind of go out of the 
you know, move those players in decently. How tight are the corners going to play on you guys? Seven to ten. Seven to ten and probably backpedaling right out of the back. Don't get beat deep, right? So you can do it at obviously a tight end set here. Or if you have a couple kids that you'd like to throw the ball to, you can split one out. But a smoke route is a great route. So if I'm the outside receiver here, all right, and if you guys see this kid, seven to ten and then a bail, you just call we we literally now our second, you guys might want to call something better, is we you know we do that. Smoke for the high school kid. I get fired for my signal somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So these guys are on the line of scrimmage, and, and literally all they do is they take one step vertical, two, three back, catch the football. And then what we do is we have this player, he'll go kick out the inman on the line of scrimmage, or the inman out here. Okay, so he'll outside release, and he comes flat aiming to kick that player out. He'll take one step vertical, two steps back, and it's really a pretty easy throw for your quarterback because he's under center. The full move is all the same, so we teach our kids take a snap, step, slide, and throw like you're playing baseball, like you're a shortstop, and you're taking it and you're throwing to first base. That's literally what it is. Or if you were throwing to your right, if you're a second baseman and you're throwing to third base, you would rip your hips, right? Same thing that we teach our quarterbacks from in the gun. Now, we teach them to step downhill towards them. So they're going to take a snap, they're going to step a little bit downhill, slide and throw. At the youth level, you have to have your quarterback, he's going to step back at 45. So he would step here, step, slide, and throw, and he would have to get depth from the line of scrimmage. But when you've got a quick screen call, when you've got smoke call, you tell your line to fire out, block. All right? Now, again, I don't know what you guys are able to do. We get, and we're in the gun, we don't even block the guys up front. Okay, when we run screens, we don't touch them. So if I'm a tackle and I've got a defensive end there, my aiming point, I try to get my inside hand on his outside shoulder. And so I'm sorry, my outside hand on his outside shoulder, I'm gonna punch and I'm gonna rip and then they go flat. You can't do that under center. But if you could get your kids to go 1, 1,002 and then go, that's a great way to get in that. If you've got an athletic tackle, and if you've got somebody you think might be able to pull, if you could get him over here, 1, 1,002 and go, now you've got an extra defender. But all we're trying to do is get the ball out real quick, and then he comes up in the out. That's a basic quick screen that we run, or we run bubble, and we do it the same way. The difference being is that now this player would be your bubble guy, okay? Or you would go B missile, bubble left, and that might even be better. We bubble, we bubble a lot from missile motion. So I would missile this guy, and once he gets to the tackle, that's when the ball snap. Once he gets to the tackle, he starts on a bubble route, so he's going to get depth to four yards behind the line of scrimmage. And again, that's another really simple quick screen. Quarterback takes a snap, steps back, step, slide, and throw down the line. And that's a great way right there. Now I've got him blocking head up, and he can go block your alley player, and you're into a trip set. And that's a pretty easy pass play to just throw in. It. It's, it's just a long sweep. So that, that might be a really good thing. Smokes and bumps. <laughs> I wouldn't, if I were you, get into jail breaks and slip screens and things like that, because that takes a tremendous amount of time. But this doesn't. If you've got a kid that can throw it a little bit, a kid that can catch it, those are those really aren't that hard to throws. And, and, and you know, I've I've made a living throwing this. It's been really good for us because you're getting an athlete ball out of space. You know, if I run jet sweep, he gets the ball here, and he's got to run in there. If I throw him a bubble, he's already out there. Okay, coaching point for this for your slot receiver. Is once he bubbles back, you know, aiming point at four yards, he cannot come towards the line of scrimmage until that ball is caught. Not because it's illegal, but because then it throws off the motion and the direction the quarterback is used to throw. The key to this, the key to making this play work, is to make sure that your slots 
and your outside receivers run the same exact route every time because your quarter, it's all a timing thing. Catch, step, slide, throw. All right, and, and, and it's got to be a lot of repetition. Make it very repetitive with that. So while these guys are doing the same thing and throwing the football, these guys have to get to a depth. And so you just use cones. You've got to get to this cover. You can't move forward until you catch the football. That's two really easy ways to get the ball to the perimeter quick. And again, I don't know if you can do it, but if you got an athletic tackle, 1 1002, and if you ran this bubble or even a smoke, you would tell this guy, 1 1002, try and get out there and reach that linebacker straight over the top if you could. Yeah. So you're at slide at any point for either the wide receiver or the guy in motion, it's always going to be the same spot. So a smoke will be a little bit different because he's just going to go here. But what I, so the smoke needs to be the same always, no matter who's running, as far as, you know, it's, it's one step off, one step, all right, then two, three, catch. Okay, that has to be the same every time. So your quarterback knows I'm throwing there. And if it's a bubble, he knows. I'm throwing there, and then we get up. That's all I'm saying. Slot. It's got to be. It's got to be consistent with your slots, or with your outside receivers. But those are those are two really good, really good quick screens that you could run. And if you could get your tackle out, it'd be awesome. Do you guys ever have uncovered linemen? Do we get uncovered linemen, or do they cover everybody up? Because if you have uncovered linemen, your rule could be: if you're uncovered, go. If you're uncovered, go down. Don't even, don't even hesitate. Just go and get flat. So if you guys have a 50 front that you were going against, you can just tell this guy, listen, at the snap, you're covered up. These guys are all going to block that up. Get flat and try to get to that linebacker. Get flat and try to get to that linebacker. I know it's a lot of thinking for those kids. But if they're uncovered, that's another way to get them out and not have to worry about any time. Just go. What else? Anything else offensively? That I can try to clarify. I don't know if you guys want to pull on jet sweep. Uh, I don't know if you can pull. It's best when you pull, but Something that you could do that, that's, pretty, that's pretty simple is what we call pin and pull. All right, which means we do it from a three-man surface, whether it's a tight end, okay, or an unbalanced tackle. If you're there, what, what we've done in the past with our, with our tight ends or our tackles is we've pinned that guy, and I told you that my, you know, these guys are more of my athletes. He would reach there, and then I would pull him around. Pin and pull is a pretty simple concept. You're going to block down. You're going to pull around. I don't know if you guys can do it, uh, but that, that's, a, that's a pretty simple way of trying to get an extra block to the edge. If you're in unbalanced and you're on a jet, a jet sweep right, you could pin, reach there, pull him around, and now you've got a lot of guys at the edge. Get some extra blockers in. Depends on what your lineman can do. I know, I know it's lineman. I get that. So as you're looking through your jet sweep stuff, uh, there's there's five pages maybe just on jet sweep, different ways to run it. Just be creative with how you do it. I'm worried about his terminology. A jet sweep right. That's what we call it in high school. Just signal it in. And if you want to signal, I don't know if anybody plans to signal. A jet and then. You know, you've got a sweep right here, sweep right, sweep left. It's pretty simple. Okay. Offensively, anything else? The only other thing that I, that I planned to talk about was this rugby tackling. Okay? Uh, everything that you guys have been taught from Heads Up Football is exactly 100% good. It's good stuff. Okay? 90, 80% of the concussions that occur, occur when there's a player that's running laterally and you're chasing him. You, me, everybody, we've always been taught, get your head across the front. He can't run through your head, okay? Well, that's where all of the concussions occur. Tons of them. If you think about it, if the kid's coming in and he's forming up right away, if you were running an ISO with me, and I form up with my head's up, and my back's arched, and I'm coming up through, 
Concussions don't really occur there. It's when you're chasing somebody from the side and you try to get your head across the front and all of a sudden this guy cuts into you, bang, and now your head has been shifted this way. That's where the concussions are occurring. So that's where rugby tackling has really come into play. And why is it rugby? Well, rugby guys, they run laterally. You know, if you ever want, they run a rugby pitch and they all tackle from that way. So what they said, well, we don't wear helmets. We're going to keep our heads at this. All right, we're not going to tell them to put their head across the front. And so with the new rugby tackling, which everybody is going to right now, everybody, uh, we're teaching our kids, if, if you're lining a guy up, what we call it profile tackling. If you're lining a guy up and he's running that way laterally, or if I'm, I'm looking at his profile or at his side, my aiming point is to put my outside shoulder on his inside hip. And we're going low. A lot of your kids wrestle. They know all about how to take people down. And that's really what it is. It's a combination of a lateral rugby tackle with a two-leg takedown. And so what we're doing is we're aiming it up and we're keeping that guy, his inside hip on our outside hip. And we're staying square. And what we're trying to do is we're making contact. We're trying to put our outside shoulder on his inside hip. And then what we do is we wrap, we keep our head on the back, which again is really foreign to me too. It's hard for, you know, I constantly want to go back and say, you can't trust from me. And we're not going that way. We're keeping the head out of the game. And so we're tackling here, and then when we make contact, we're shooting the daggers just like everybody always does. But at that point, then we call it a gator roll. And so you grab a hole, and now you're going to death roll him and spin him down. And it's a really effective way of tackling number one. Um, but more importantly, you're keeping your head out of football. All right, out of out of getting hit, and we're you know we're talking to our kids about it, and, and they ask us, well, what happens when when it's an ISO? That guy runs right at us, and it's well, you go hit him, right? That's it's still old school. You go hit him, but again, if you're doing the right things, you guys have been teaching the heads up. The only thing that I would tell you to do is is when when you're tackling tackling anything laterally, tell them now we've got to retrain our thinking. It's, it used to be get your head across the front. Now it's get your shoulder, your outside shoulder on his inside hip. And, and, and wrap, everything's the same there. But once we wrap, now we death roll him onto the ground. And we go from there. Okay. Uh, what, what I can tell you guys, two things. Number one, it's an effective way of tackling. I don't, I don't think you guys probably deal with too many concussion issues. But all of a sudden now, you can start talking to parents about we're doing this because we're going to keep the kids' heads out of contact. That's the objective. And if rugby can do it without pads, then we should be able to do it with pads and, and protect our kids. All right? Guys, there are a million drills online. If you look up Pete Carroll, you can YouTube it. Go to Pete Carroll Rugby Tap. And he has, he has hours of demonstration and, and drills and things like that. And it's excellent. I mean, if, they're, if it's good enough for the NFL, it's good enough for us, right? And then, you know, uh, and they're doing it, and they've got really good results. They play really good defense. Mount Union's doing it. We spent some time with them over spring. Watch them. You know, they're doing it. They still have collisions, man. Head on. It, it happens. You know, you guys are teaching the right things with the heads up football. Now we add this when we're tackling somebody from a profile view or a lateral view. I think that I think we'll see good results. I think the parents will be pleased that we're doing everything we can to protect their kid's head. So there's a million drills on there, um, and every one that you see is what we do at the high school level. So that there's nothing that, that we're going to do that, that's not shown on those videos. So just Pete Carroll, you know, rugby tackle, and, and there'll be all kinds of demonstrations on What else? Anything else? Um, guys, I'm going to come to practices. I, I, I'm not down there to, to judge. I'm not down there. I just, I just want to be around, you know. I want to be around these kids. I want to start to learn. We're having junior high camp this week uh, from 9 to 11, and it's been really cool to just start meeting these kids. It's been really good. We had freshmen. The freshmen, for the first time in the last 22 years, practice with the varsity. And it was really good. I know all the freshmen's first and last name. 
Oh, and we're not even at you know, two of these yet. And so and that's been really good. And, and my goal is to try to learn as many of these kids. It's been neat. I see them around. I see them in town. I may not remember their name, but I recognize them. I can you know, say hi. And, and I enjoy that. You know, uh, as I said, we, we moved here, so we're in. As long as we'll have us. So we're in. But what else? Anything else, guys? I'll just make sure you go over the cadence so we're all going to say. Yeah, absolutely. So on ready. All right. On ready, so the linemen, when they get to the ball, the linemen should all be here. Okay? On ready, they snap down all at once. So the quarterback is going to say, ready. And then they're going to snap down. And then our cadence is, and I know this is weird, it's down. They're already down. Down. And then we combine our two words. Set up. And we tell our kids, you go on, as soon as you hear this, go. All right, so set up becomes one word. All right, if you want to go on two, set up, put. You know, if you want to go on three, whatever. All right, we do something pretty cool. And, and, you know, hopefully you guys don't tell me, but, uh, but when we want to go on two, I let my quarterback, it's completely, a, you know, autonomous on him. Uh, there's occasion where I'll say, hey, change up the count. But normally we try to play so fast that we just go on, we're normally going on this. Um, but then what he'll do is if he, if he sees a defensive lineman that's, that's jumping our snap, all right, he'll go, he'll go eyes, 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 and he'll tap his visor. Or he'll go ears, 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 or arm, he'll, he'll do that. And he'll be looking out at the wide receivers yelling it to the lineman. Eyes, 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 ears, 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 arm, arm, arm. Defense is thinking that he's calling out of them. You know, going like that, or touching his face, and asking going like that. Well, we have two eyes, we have two ears, we have two arms. So that's on two. All right? And so we get people to jump off sides all the time. Because we don't change our count up that much. But he'll, he'll, they'll think you're giving an audible, and all of a sudden, there we go. Sir, that's all right. So that, that's been a good way for us to, uh, to do that. So, but that's, that's what it is. Ready, everybody sat down, down, set up. And all one word. What else? What about huddle? Are you doing your no huddle? <laughs> we will. Uh, yeah, we, we don't huddle. We'll huddle um, at the start of a series, but we don't. We muddle huddle when we do it. I, I wouldn't put. You know, so our quarterback. You know, the, the football's right here. Quarterback would be right here, and then we go left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. You guys can just do the traditional model that you've always done. Okay, I, I wouldn't recommend more than a model yet. So, yeah, your, yeah. Your defense, do you, do you like? I mean, what is your formation? I knew. Uh, oh, that's all right. right. Yeah. I don't know a lot about. I, I, did you? Did you, you got the defense playbook yet? Yeah, just, it just got you yeah. today. It just got you today. today. Okay. It, it, it's based. It's going to be a fifty. All right, it's going to be a 50 front, but it's, it's, it's a gap. Okay. It's a gap of 50. So as long as you, know, you get that. Okay. All right. Uh, but again, I'll be down at camp next week with you guys. And if there's more questions, as you, you know, I know everybody's starting to get the playbook. When you have, does everybody have my cell phone number? If you don't, please call me, text me if you have questions. I'm available. All right, don't be afraid to call. Um, you know, if, if you need to get a hold of me, email for something more in depth. I'm sorry, I write like that. Okay, T O D D J D 49 at Gmail. If you guys don't have that, you can contact me whenever you want. Okay, I'm available. The coolest thing about coming to Wadsworth is that I was an administrator at my last two jobs. And I was busy all the time, man. It sucked. Now I'm just a gym teacher. And I love it. <laughs> so we call you, or we call you, or you call me whatever you want. Right? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you have a good suggestion, I'm sure everybody will. I'm sure everybody will. So feel free anytime. <laughs>
If you've got specific questions about uh, plays, alignments, you know, if, if, if you draw up something, you're like, hey, I think this will take a picture of the enemy. And I, I just like football. You know, it's, it's fun to talk about. It's fun to look at. How much blitzing do you think uh, for our age group? I don't know what you're allowed, but aren't there some limitations? The younger ones. On who you can blitz, how many you can blitz, or is there not? I don't think so. Or is that just the turn? Doesn't it have to be with inside the tackles? Or is that just the turn? So inside blitzes? Yeah, yeah. Inside. I think it has to be inside blitzes. I mean, I don't know. I you can't line up on the line. Uh, right, it has to be four yards off, I think. Okay, it, it has to be a delayed blitz coming from back there. Well, I, I don't know. You know, with me, I, I, I'm an aggressive guy, so I like the blitz. But at the youth level, I, I as, as long as you're, you're blitzing, um, and, and opportune times as opposed to, well, this kid can't do what we're teaching them to do, so we're just going to blitz them. You know, then you find a, a different position. You know, so I, I would say if, if you're going to, to gain an advantage, not to mask up a deficiency of that kid, you know what I mean? So I, that, that's the one thing I would say. Try to teach those kids how to read, you know, keep their eyes on their keys. That's the most important thing at this age. Anything else? Okay. Anytime, guys. Call me. I'll be down next week at camp. I'm sorry, it's a heat boxing here. Let's see how much you guys can sweat. <laughs>